here we go um rasheed rice is going to be out i mean we haven't got an official word yet but it's looking like he's going to be out for the year with an acl injury so the question that we have right now is all the chiefs winning ways sustainable without rasheed rice and say the mic is yours well, of course it is. Um, the Chiefs have been in a winning situation before Rice, and they're going to be in a winning situation after Rice. We understand he's a marquee receiver. We understand how talented he is. We understand what he means to the offense itself. But when you got Speed and Xavier Worthy, when you got Travis Kelsey out there, when you got guys who get under the radar all the time like Noah Gray, you're going to get points on the board. You're going to get on yards down the field, and things are going to happen. Magic is going to happen. As long as you have Mahomes and Andy Reid on that football field, Magic will happen. As long as you have Andy Reid calling plays, magic will happen. That's just the Chiefs. That's what they've shown us the last several years. It's shown They've shown us that it doesn't matter who's on the field. It no matter what talent they relinquish, they trade away, they don't um, bring back. It doesn't matter. The Kansas Chief, City Chiefs find ways to win, rather it's through the Zebras or through their own play and through their own points. And that's just the nature of the game. And I'm sorry whoever's watching and saying, oh, Zay, you're wrong. Zay, how could you say that? Rasheed Weiss is so valuable. Well, he is talented. No one's saying he's not. But at the same time, when's the last time you seen a Chiefs team get over sour grapes about a receiver? When Tyreek Hill was gone, I thought that was going to be the nature of their team. And guess what? They won a championship the very next season. So Jim. it's going to be um, di different things that happen with this team, especially if there's going to be an emergence of Xavier Worthy, who is running down the field open almost every damn play. He's creating separation at a at a at speed we haven't seen since Tyreek Hill in a Kansas City Chiefs jersey. And he's going to cause havoc on defenses. It's just the nature of the game. Yeah, um, I'm going to disagree with Zay. I don't think it's sustainable. I mean, unless the referees continue to impact the games like how they've been doing for the first couple of weeks, then maybe it is sustainable. But um, when you look at this Chiefs team, prior to the injury, the play of the injury to Rasheed Rice, right, they were not playing that well. And this is not a victory where you kind of like, oh, we won against the Chargers, yay. No, it's not. Woohoo! No. Okay? The Chargers were missing during James, who ironically – got suspended by the NFL prior to this matchup. We all know that, you know, he kind of, he got Kelsey's number a little bit, okay? He was missing in this game because he got suspended, all right? Um, they were without Joey Bosa, right? And on that same play that Rasheed Rice got hurt, Mahomes threw an interception that led to that injury, okay? That was Mahomes' fault. That injury was Mahomes. Clearly not because he only took him out. Like, it's bad enough as friendly fire, like you're playing Call of Duty. OK, but your duty as a quarterback is to not put your receivers in harm's way. And he did that by overthrowing Kelsey. Number one, he could have almost got Kelsey head taken off. I mean, come on. When are we going to call Mahomes out? Now, I know he had the deep ball to Xavier Worthy or whatever. But not only did he take his guy out for the season in Rasheed Rice, he almost took Kelsey head off. OK, now I don't like Kelsey. OK, clearly I don't. I don't like what he stands for. I don't like his face. And I don't like that Taylor Swift coverage. But I do not wish for players to get hurt. He almost took the guy head off, okay? That's number one. Number two, we cannot underestimate Rasheed Rice in his addition to this offense, okay? With those underneath routes, those um shallow crosses, right? He is basically playing Travis Kelsey's role, running the same routes that Kelsey ran, okay? This guy is a volume, you know, machine. He takes the volume. Last year, he was big. He gave the Chiefs just enough on offense, to win a Super Bowl last year, along with Isaiah Pacheco. Those guys are not there, okay? Isaiah Pacheco is done for the year. Well, not done for the year, but almost. And then when he comes back, how much is he really going to give you, right? So you lose Isaiah Pacheco. You don't have Hollywood. He's gone, okay? And now you lose Rasheed Rice. Look, I understand that Mahomes is Mahomes. I understand that Andy Reid is Andy Reid. But you could do all that scheming. And sure, they may get by. They may get by, right? But to win another Super Bowl without Rasheed Rice, if that happens, that says more about the league than the Chiefs to me because clearly they are very vulnerable right now, okay? So um, right now is the time to get the Chiefs. If you're the NFL, the Ravens look good. The Bengals, you know, they can get their acts together and win a couple more games and, and make the playoffs. They are definitely vulnerable right now like they were last year, but even more so this year. So I thought that game on Sunday against the Chargers was one of those classic games where you win the battle because you win the game, but you lose the war because of the brutal injury to Rasheed Rice. And it's not a confirmed torn ACL yet as we watched the touchdown by Worthy. That was uh, some play right there. Blazing speed. Um, 
So we'll see if Rice is actually out for the season. I think he most likely is, which is a, a brutal blow. But I think Will brought up a good point. Like this is now the third tough, tough break the Chiefs have caught this season when it comes to injuries. They lost Hollywood Brown, who was supposed to be an impact player for them, a wide receiver. He didn't even play a game for them, getting hurt in the preseason. They lose Pacheco and they lose Rice. But I think this is the most important injury, like the most impactful injury of those three, because I think Rice, when you watched him throughout the first four games so far this season, he looked poised to me as a guy that was about to make the leap and become one of the better wide receivers in the sport. Probably not on the top, top tier with, you know, Justin Jefferson and CD Lamb, but I would say the tier right below that. And when you look at the Chiefs skill position players right now, I'll admit it's not great. You have Samaji P. Ryan and this dude Carson Steele, who I don't think is an NFL player when I watch him. Uh, Kareem Hunt, the corpse of him uh, at running back. You have Xavier Worthy and Juju Smith-Schuster and Justin Watson and even Sky Moore, who I forgot was on the team at wide receiver. And they do have Kelsey, who finally had a pretty nice game on Sunday against the Chargers, but he looks a little bit old. You want to keep him fresh for the playoffs. He's 35 years old. So the first thing I would say for the Chiefs is, I think they have to trade for a wide receiver. Now, we know that that's not going to be Devontae Adams. I don't think Mark Davis would trade his top yeah, receiver I, to a division rival. Like, I don't think that's happening, um, especially after the Chiefs won a Super Bowl in his building last year. So we could cross that off. But if I was Kansas City, I would go after Amari Cooper. He's a guy that looks completely checked out in Cleveland right now after he was involved in trade rumors this past offseason for Brandon Ayuk. And... I still think that the Chiefs are still the clear-cut favorites to not only win the AFC, but also win another championship. And I still think they're going to do that. But where this injury shifts my opinion on them is before all of these injuries happened, I thought the Chiefs were just going to be a dominant regular season team and finish like 14-3 and three or 13-4, and four, get the bye week and go from there. But I think with these injuries as a result of them, there's going to be a point in the regular season where they struggle and they lose a few games or two, just like they did last year. And I think at that time, a lot of people are going to start jumping off the bandwagon. But I think last year we learned our lesson, right? This team could struggle in the regular season, especially on the offensive side of the ball, but they use the regular season to fin to figure some things out. But kind of uh, like I hinted at, as long as they have Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Andy Reid and Steve Spagnola in the playoffs, it's going to take me actually seeing someone beat them to believe it. And I know that Patrick Mahomes, the start to this season for him hasn't been great relative to his expectations. He's thrown some pretty bad interceptions and his numbers don't really jump off the page. But I think the most underrated part of this Chiefs team so far is not only the fact that they're 4-0 and haven't played their best football yet, but this defense is elite. The Chargers scored 10 points early in the first quarter and didn't score for the rest of the game. They were just completely shut down. And I think the Chiefs honestly have a case for the best defense in the league. Chris Jones is just playing at a monster, monster level, uh, proving that the Chiefs made the right decision by bringing him back. And I just think it's scary for the rest of the league that the Chiefs offense has not gotten going yet. They might trade for a wide receiver. They should. And they're still 4-0, and they're the only undefeated team in the AFC. And my last point, too, at the running back position, don't be surprised, and I'm sure a lot of people forgot about this guy, forgot about this name, but I'm looking for Clyde Edwards-Alaire to make an impact when he comes back in the next week or two. This guy is a former first-round pick that has had a lot of struggles. He's faced a lot of adversity both on the field and off the field uh, throughout the first few years of his career. But sometimes, I said this about Sam Darnold with the Vikings, the best opportunities come at the time where you least expect it. And I think he could be a guy that could take advantage of this opportunity playing behind a very good Kansas city offensive line. Look, we could talk about the chiefs defense all we want to, and we could take away positives from, you know, uh, Sunday. If we want to, we could find those little positives in that game. If we want to sure. But the reality of the situation, the Chargers lost that game, the Chargers forget about the chiefs defense for a second. The Chargers had nine penalties, seven offensively. And these penalties, I watched the game, stalled drives. It put them in second and 15, you know, you know, second and 20. I mean, you're not going to score, bruh, especially with holding plays. All right, that kills drives. Those are drive killers. 
Okay, and now we forgetting the most important aspect of this, the field position battle. When you are having a lot of penalties offensively, you're flipping the field position to where the Chiefs has a short field to work with. Okay, so at the end of the day, I took away from this game that the Chargers, their coaching was bad. I mean, look, I, I like Jim Harbaugh. I call him him Harbaugh. His resume speaks for itself. But, man, I thought Staley was coaching on Sunday for a second. Okay, with all the, the bad clock management, the mismanagement of timeouts, Greg Roman is fourth and one, and you got Herbert, you know, in a shotgun. This guy could barely walk, and you got him in a shotgun to take a hit. No, he can't move. Okay, literally knowing that, and you allowed him to get blitz on the fourth and one out of the shotgun where he has to just lob the ball up. No, it was bad play calling. One thing that the Chiefs had clearly, distinctively over the Chargers was the coaching battle. They won that clearly, okay, with Andy Reid and Steve Spagnuolo. Now, that's where you give credit to the defense because they're well coached. But at the end of the day, we have to look at what the Chargers didn't do because the last time I checked, they had a 10-point lead. Well, this is a common trend I've noticed with just about every Chiefs game, though, is a lot of times we watch them in these regular season games, and it's clear that they don't play their best. They don't play to their highest capabilities and their opponents will make a few mistakes here and there that will really cost them. But this is why they should deserve credit because they don't do that. All this team has done for the past few years is find ways to win. And coaching has a lot to do with that. Uh, the defense has a lot to do with that. Mahomes hasn't played his best, but he was able to make the one big throw he needed to, to worthy uh, to get the big touchdown on the board. So I think that's the thing. Like this team has plenty of flaws right now. They're not perfect, but we know the injuries are bad. And at the end of the day, we need to see someone play them in the playoffs and not make those mistakes. There's one quarterback that's active in the NFL right now. His name's Joe Burrow that has beaten Patrick Mahomes in a playoff game. And then Mahomes came back and beat him the next year. And Burrow hasn't beaten him again since. Yeah, I mean, the so, referees definitely had their fingerprints all over the last two games. I mean, clearly. But the Chiefs, I mean, yeah, we looking at the Chiefs 4-0. Clearly good for them. They're not chasing four. No, they're not chasing five and no or six and no. They're chasing another another ring. They want a three peat right now. We have to look at them as okay. Where are they? Have we seen a a, a, a team that is capable of going on another run? Especially when you stockpile the injuries, the injuries, the injuries. I've been watching football for a minute, and when those injuries happen, they come in bunches. They don't stop. They ruin your season. Ask the 49ers, when it rains, it pours. We lost one quarterback, then we lost another, then we lost another. And now we got CMC taking snaps in the Dagwood NFC Championship game. It happens like that. That's the NFL. When the injury bug comes, it comes. Okay? And it rains, it pours. It's going to happen to the Chiefs. I'm telling you right now, knock on wood, I don't like the team. I don't like the people on the team. Okay? Because of exterior. It don't have nothing to do with football. Okay? But it's personal, but it's not in, in the NFL. Knock on wood. But it's going to happen, bro. I've seen it what too many it times. Though? Okay? And, and one more point quickly, Zach. It's not like this 4-0 team has played like a 4-0 team. Okay? Um, The Ravens game, the Ravens, they had four illegal formations in the first half. They should have got blown out that game. And they almost had a chance to win the game, obviously. Um, week two, I mean, the referees took over the game. Now, you can sit here and say if that was, like, intentional, you know, intentional or not. But the Bengals did not control that game anymore with their, you know, self-oriented mistakes. It was a referee decision that ended that game. The Falcons game, okay, they missed some calls. Now, they got back some calls, the Falcons did on their side, but they missed a critical call on Kyle Pitts. Now we get to this game, nine penalties, seven on offense, okay? Teams are killing themselves. When is a team going to step up? And I have reason to believe, well, I hope so, it's the NFL, okay, that some team, when they play Kansas City, without their guys, is going to play a complete game, and they're going to win that game and knock off Kansas City. Yeah, well, you can say that about every team then, right? Yeah, and, and, and let me, NFL. Well, like, let me ask you this. Would you consider them still to be the Super Bowl favorite or no? Not in the AFC. No, not in general. No. So who, who would be? Who would You're be talking favorite? about AFC or in general? Both. In general. No. They are not the favorites to come out. So who is? I would probably go with the Lions right now. I will probably go with them. Okay. The Lions, I'll go with the Lions. If we want to know how many teams I'll go, I'll go Lions. Okay, well, how about the, in the AFC? 49ers. How about in the AFC? 
in the AFC, I like the Ravens. I like what they're doing right now. I think but the Ravens did not play. The Ravens did not play like how they're playing now in Week One. Clearly, but with they, they punted the preseason. They was not ready for that game in Week One. If they play, ready the Chiefs, for it now. If they played the Chiefs in the playoff game, though, would you be confident that they'd win? I mean, Lamar Jackson. I I, I would assume that one of these playoff games he's going to show up. I would assume that. I will bank on that. I will bank on him having one good playoff game when it matters the most to, to beat the Chiefs. I think if they play the Chiefs right now, they win that game right now. If they play them in January, barring that guys don't come back and, and, and the, the injury situation still exists, they should be able to beat Kansas City. That week know. one game is going to do wonders for the Ravens. Mark my words. If the Ravens are able to win this division or not even win, get in and they meet Kansas City, that week one game will be critical in their confidence to beat Kansas City because they blew that game and they know it. Their run game was never the issue. Every single season, it's been the pass game. Every time when the playoffs come, it's been the passing game that's been an issue, right? Even last year, like when they lost, like they just threw the ball way too damn much. They didn't know when to throw the ball, when to run the ball. It just seemed like an amateur hour at that point. They seemed like they they, they were in front of greatness and they didn't know what to do. Like it, it's the Ravens' DNA, right? Like being, they once they come in the playoffs, all bets are off. You, you're banking on hopefully the other team making a mistake. And when you're playing against the Chiefs in the playoffs, they barely make mistakes. It's very rare that the Chiefs make consecutive mistakes in a game in the playoffs, right? And you have to take advantage of those. The Ravens don't, and they don't. They've been making mistakes. The, the problem is, is that their mistakes don't cost them as much. They get a couple calls from the referees. Last year, they let the league in drops. They fumbled that game away in Buffalo. They should have when they mm -hmm. fumbled out of bounds, and then Buffalo missed the kick. Mm -hmm. Stephon did shot the ball. I mm -hmm. mean, the Chiefs should have beat themselves multiple times last year. Self-inflicted wounds. That's and they're doing right. it again this year. That's the crazy part about it. Now, I don't believe in this fluke. You cannot beat yourselves continuously and win. Otherwise, now I'm looking at the NFL differently because everything I know about the game was if you beat yourself, you lose the game. Clearly, yep. it didn't happen to the Chiefs last year, and clearly it's not right now. It got to catch up to them at some point. We also have to acknowledge that AFC this season is a lot more, a lot more lackluster than it was last year, right? CJ Stroud's taking a step back. He doesn't look like the same dynamic. I mean, what what game are you watching, bro? Stroud looking good to me. He's not Brian Flores is Brian year. Flores. That's it. CJ Stroud ain't looking like last year. He ain't looking like who he was last year. And this is the truth of the matter. Is he started zero two last forgot. year? You forgot. You forgot he started zero two last year, right? A lot of, but he didn't look bad last year. That's what I'm saying. This year he looked. He's looking pedestrian. No, I, I, I just think about that. I think defenses are adjusting to him a little bit. They're they're playing some some safeties back, and he still looked fine. Maybe not as good as last year, but I, I think that was expected, uh, just given more, the more tape on him. But guys, my thing is, I just have learned my lesson. Like last year, the Chiefs in late December, going into January, could not have been playing worse. We remember that Christmas game against the Raiders of all teams when they didn't even score an offensive touchdown, and Aiden O'Connell didn't even throw for a yard in the second half of that game, and they still lost to the Raiders. And then next thing you know, they turn around in January and are right back to being one of the best and most dynamic offenses in the league come playoff time. I just think they deserve the benefit of the doubt. The Rice injury sucks, but they're going to get Pacheco back. I think they're going to trade for a wide receiver. And again, their defense is elite. If you give me Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, and an elite defense in January, I'll take my chances. All right, so look the – Sean Michelle, who commented on Instagram, unfortunately, we can't pull up Instagram comments on, on here for whatever reason, but salute to Sean Michelle. Um, we are going to move on. Y'all ready to move on to the NBA? Please like and subscribe for all the up-to-date content. We're, we, you've been slinging shows left and right, slinging content left and right. Please don't miss anything. If you do, like, subscribe, leave a comment, or leave a question, something you may want to answer, something you may have. It's, all ideas are great ideas. Nothing's a dumb question.